on people Sunday afternoon and I wanted to go over why Coinbase is potentially going materially higher. Um, one of the questions I get from a lot of people who don't really follow me in my Substack is how do you use options data to decide what is going higher? So what I do is every day I send out basically something to this extent. Well, people have access to my database, right? But in the database, you've got something like this where I put in all the unusual trades in a session. So this was Friday. There was a lot less than usual because we had the little outage with CrowdStrike. Usually it's a lot more. You can see here, like the day before, it was uh, 88, 126, right? And there's 126 trades. And I break it down into calls bought, puts bought, puts sold to kind of try to give you a little gauge of what's bullish, what's bearish, and to go off there. And so this video is about Coinbase. And the reason I want to talk about Coinbase is because, so I have this ranking system, right? And the ranking system basically takes all the trades in the database and it gives them a bullish or bearish score, right? And so the bullish bearish score is just a net score of bullish trades minus bearish trades or vice versa. And right now, over the last seven days, Coinbase is the most bullish trade. And so, okay, let's talk about it. Let's look at what we've got. So in the last week, these are all the trades I've logged on Coinbase. You can see here on 715, uh, there's a 320 call bought for nine uh, for September, 1500X. You see this big trade here on July 16th, uh, 450 calls all the way out in December, 2026. That's the max strike, uh, 500X. That's really big money because it's so far out. And then you can see here on like 717, you had these huge call buys, 275 for July 26, which is this coming week. And then you can see here, 250 calls for August, 30,000 X. These are monster, monster trades. And then of course, Friday, you had another thousand for October at 400. So we pull up a chart of Coinbase and you can see here on the daily, it's over all the moving averages. Okay, this is a nice looking chart. And you see here on the monthly, this is a beautiful cup. It's forming a little handle and it wants to go higher, right? This is a very beautiful setup, but this is a very volatile stock, right? It's, it's so hard to play stuff like this with calls because, you know, this name will move, you know, 18% in one direction and then on nothing, it'll move 26% in the other direction. And that's how these little, you know, junk stocks work. And I know Coinbase isn't really a junk stock, but in the scope of things, it's not, you know, one of the mega caps uh, where there's price stability. It's always just moving around in crazy directions. Now, the thing with Coinbase is, like I said, this is a textbook setup. And now it's flagging right here over the eight month. This is the eight month, uh, this is the 21 month. This is a nice chart, but how do you play something like this? So for me, the thing that I try to do most is I try to highlight risk reversals. The reason I try to highlight risk reversals is because you sell puts to finance calls, right? So what happens is if you buy calls and a trade doesn't work, you're screwed. Your money is gone. But if you sell puts to finance those calls, well, you can sometimes put the trade on for free or even get paid with a credit if you, if you structure it the right way, right? You might have to sell two puts, you might have to sell three puts. And yes, it requires margin. Uh, again, there's no free lunch in life, right guys? So uh, and I, I'm not catering to people that have you know $20,000 in their trading account. That's not who I'm looking to uh, structure trades for. I am just trying to create the best trades that work, okay? I, I, I don't really care. Um, I don't really care if the trade doesn't suit what you're looking to do. Uh, maybe you don't look at every single trade that I discuss, but the reality is selling puts is a high probability trade, right? So if you sell puts, like right here on this, on this daily, right? This is a 200 day at 180. You can sell puts pretty hard at 180. The reason being this 200 day is gonna continue sloping up, right? As long as Coinbase is up here near 260, this is gonna continue sloping higher. And on any move down, 
Coinbase should, at worst, bounce off the 200-day, and that should be the bottom, right? You look at CrowdStrike Friday, the crazy crash that it had, it stopped at the 200-day. That's usually how this stuff works, right? There's always a level where a stock is a buy, and for most people, it's the 200-day. Can the 200-day break? Absolutely, but when you're a quality name, it's very, very rare for the 200 day to break. And, and by quality, I don't mean uh, is Coinbase quality. I mean, for most like normal names that aren't complete junk, the 200 day rarely breaks. And when it does, it's signaling something major. So when you look here and then you pull up the monthly, right? You can see over here, the 21 month is materially lower, maybe like 160. But what I would do if I was gonna play options here, you've got multiple choices, right? Your first choice is, okay, I wanna play conservatively. I don't really wanna mess around with the day-to-day -day stuff. And I'm gonna sell puts at 180, maybe six months out. You can do that. You can sell a put spread if you don't wanna tie up margin. Maybe you do a 180, 160 put spread. The likelihood this comes down to the 200 day and breaks it is, I would say, fairly low, especially considering all the bullish option flow that I'm showing, right? So again, you go back down here, uh, well, these are all call buys. Usually they'll be put sales, but there's none. Um, but this is only from 714. Look, if I, if I go back to say like March or something, right? You can see all the trades I have in my database and then you can filter it, right? To just the put sales. So there's only one put sale and it's from May and it's for November and look where it's at. It's at 160. So someone had that same idea back a few months ago and you know the 200 day has continued to trend up now if you want to be gutsy you just buy calls higher right if, if all these people are looking for coinbase to go to 400 350 whatever you can simply just buy calls at 300 but here's the thing if coinbase goes flat for let's say like three weeks your calls are going to get smoked and that's why i'm telling you if you sell puts to offset the cost in the event the trade doesn't work, instead of losing money, you can break even, or you can even get a small credit. And so once you slowly start to understand how to utilize options in your favor, you're going to become a better trader. Because the biggest issue so many people have is they panic sell calls, right? Like, like the trade will go against them 20% and they'll cut the calls for a loss. Well, if you put on the trade the right way, to where it costs you nothing or it's a credit, you aren't gonna get shaken out in a panic like that. So for me, the number one thing is finding a level on a chart where you wanna sell puts. For me, it's usually a 200 day, uh, then you've got the 200 week on a weekly chart, and then you've got the 21 month on a monthly chart. Those are just various levels where I would say, okay, that's a worst case scenario. And you start every trade by selling puts there, and then whatever money comes in, you do whatever you want with it. If you wanna buy upside calls with that money, do it. If you don't wanna buy upside calls with it, don't do it. But every trade has to begin with the level you're willing to be a buyer of shares at. And once you do that, then you're set. You're set because every name is buyable at a certain level. And that is the focus of what I try to do. I try to show you what levels that is. So like you go to my rankings, right? So this is the past week. We can go you know, back two weeks, right? So in the past two weeks, these are all the bullish names. These are all the bearish ones, right? You can pull up something like Rivian, right? And with Rivian, well, you'll notice, look at the put sales in the last two weeks. So there's been five put sales on Rivian. These are levels where institutions are willing to go long. Right, so you can see here, someone sold 10,000 puts at 1250 in August back in early July. Um, they are willing to take on a million shares at 1250. This isn't someone sitting at home, this is an institution and they're telling you where they're willing buyers. The day before, another 5,000 came at that same level in January. Uh, one like this, this $20 put, you'd have to see what the premium received was but they're selling puts in the money because they're so confident that Rivian's gonna be over 20 by October. Uh, this here, this is again, this is 90,000 shares. This is a very bullish trade. 
even though it probably has a basis of say like 15 bucks or something. So um, whatever it is, the options data always tells you where to focus. And like that's that's the thing that most people don't understand. If you just look at the daily trades uh, I highlight, just pick any day you want, right? You can see where the put sales are. And so this is the focus, okay? Uh, for me, when I look at this every day, this is the column that I want to focus on because these are institutions showing you their hand, right? These here, these can all be hedges. They can all be various different things. Who knows? But the put sales, these aren't hedges because nobody hedges anything by selling puts. And so you can see with stuff like Nike, right? Heavy put sales out in 2026 20, at 70. There are willing buyers there. Um, just a lot of these trades... They're, they're just beautiful in the way they are executed. And so, like you can see here, something like NVIDIA, I don't know if they kept these shares all the way through. You know, they can obviously close these for a loss, but maybe at that time, NVIDIA held 133. I have no idea, but what you'll notice is typically, worst case, stocks bounce off where the put sales are because there's just so much support at those levels. So that's my take on how to use all this options data. That's why I think Coinbase is about to make a pretty sizable move. And again, in the last week, it was by far the most bullish name. It had nine bullish trades. Um, you're starting to see other stuff in here, right? Like Oxy, like energy names are coming back now. And so um, you can see with something like Amazon, right? It had six trades last week of notable size, but the bull score was only two, right? So that's not very good. That means it had you know four bullish trades, two bearish trades. So you can click on it, right? You come down and, uh, what? Let me see here. Right here, see these put sales at 180? 17,000 of them. That is a huge, huge number. I guess two more expired. See, they're the expired ones, they expired Friday. But you can see 180 should be a level of big support for 816. So that's after earnings. Somebody is a willing buyer of a huge, huge amount of shares at 180. You gotta remember, each one of these is 100 shares. So, you know, I would look for the 180 level to hold into earnings because this person is not really trying to take delivery of 17,000 shares there if the stock's gonna be $165. So keep that in mind. Um, this was a deep in the money put sale out for December 2025, 1,000X. Uh, keep that in mind when you're looking at my data. And of course, look, put sales are going to work at a higher clip. That's just natural. Uh, the whole purpose of the risk reversals, again, is to put on a free trade. It's not about every risk reversal is going to work. It's about the ones that do end up paying fortunes. Like when Coupang, that ended up paying over like 100x. You're not ever going to make 100x by selling puts. Or you're not going to make 100x by straight buying calls. But if you can get your basis low enough from the put sales uh, being added to the trade, you can make some astronomical returns on trades when they work. Anyways, have a great rest of your Sunday and I will see you tomorrow.